companies use immigration crackdown to turn a profit. Companies use immigration crackdown to turn a profit for all available lodgings demand showed up in a small town in Australia's outback early last year. Within the days, the company Circo was flying in recruits from as far away as London and busying them from trailers to work. Twelve-hour shifts as guards in a remote camp where immigrants seeking asylum are indefinitely detained. The Australia has relied on the private security companies to run immigrant detention centers in place like Perth. It was just a small part of a pattern on the three continents where a handful of the multinational security companies have been turning a crackdowns on the immigration into a growing global industry. Especially in Britain, the United States and Australia governments of different stripes have an increasingly look to such companies to expand the tension and show their voters that they are enforcing tougher immigration laws. Some of the companies are huge. One is among the largest private employers in the world and they say that they are meeting demand faster and less expensively than the public center could. The ballooning of the privatized detention has been accompanied by scathing inspection reports, lawsuits, and the documentation of the widespread abuse and neglect, sometimes lethal. The human rights groups say that the detention has neither worked as a deterrent nor speeded deportion as government's content and some worry about the creation of a detention industrial complex with a momentum of its own. Kay Bernard said that they are very good at the glossy brochure. Kay Bernard is the general secretary of the Union of Detention Workers on the Australian territory of Christmas Island where riots erupted between asylum seekers and guards. On the ground, it's almost laughable the chaos and inability to function. The private prisons in the United States have a long stirred controversy. But while there have been conflicting studies about their costs and benefits, no systematic comparisons exist for the immigration detention. This is according to Matthew J. Gibney, a political scientist at the University of Oxford, who tracks the immigration systems. Mr. Gibney and the others said that the pitfalls of the outsourcing immigration enforcement have become evident in the past 15 years, when some things falls wrong at death and escape the government can blame it on the kind of the market failure instead of an accountability failure. In the United States, with almost 400,000 annual detentions in 2010 up from 280,000 in the year 2005, the private companies now control a nearly half of all the detentions bets compared with only 8% in state and federal prisons. Immigration enforcement with more troubled result than Australia. Under the unusual severe, mandatory detention laws, the system has been run by a succession of the three publicly traded companies since 1998. All the three are now major players in the international business of locking up and transporting unwanted foreigners. This is Monica of Synergy.